Vete, Isabel. She needs me. Now you have to figure out your priorities. I know you've been running around trying to find your sister, but you can't help anyone else if you're a mess. I feel very self-conscious about my body. Sometimes I'm just even scared to talk. My voice is so masculine. I know exactly what you're going through. Everything you've done, I'll do. You have a lot to get through, you know. I need to find her first. The longer you wait, the harder it's going to get. You know, I think you like knocking guys out. If it means getting her back, I won't stop. We adapt, you know. Or we create something new. Not to let go of you. I'm trying. To find her or let go? Um, but first of all, uh, good afternoon and thank you for your time. I know I have in here with me uh, the, well, the, the, you know, the protagonist of the movie Lupe and the directors of the, 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 the movie, um, Philip and, uh, and Charles, correct? Right. And, and my tocayo in Spanish, obviously, Rafael. Yeah, I, I'm excited to talk to Rafael because obviously uh, when I first got the movie, I was like, Okay, she's from Puerto Rico. He has my name. I need to talk to him. I don't care. That, <laughs> <laughs> nothing else that I need to talk. There, you, you don't need to sell me any, anything else. But Lupe, Lupe's you, coming you're, out. You're already in. You're already in. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm already sold. I don't need to. Do I'm already sold. And then when I, when I saw the movie, I was triple sold about everything. So the movie is going to come out on HBO on the 26th of February. I want to, I'm going to direct my questions, obviously, to the directors or uh, Rafael directly, but I want to speak first uh, with the directors, uh, mainly because there's, there's a character in the story, which I really liked and was, was the CEO Harrison, the, she plays Lana, obviously, and, and she basically embodies, you know, she, 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 there's what I meant of the, of where the story goes and what you were trying, but but you know what the story was trying to portray and what the story trying the message that is they're trying to you guys were trying to you know to 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 put out there when when I know she co-wrote the script when we when this project was com coming about was that something be her being part of part of the of the of the story as herself not as a written uh, uh, you know written lines but that's something organic that's something that can you know that you guys think about it from the beginning or was that something that can, you know that she said you know well, let's let's do that differently well, great question so when it first started out um we were speaking to her first we just ran the idea by her to see what she thought of it we asked questions to her we said what kind of a depiction would you like to see you know what, how, how would you like to see a, a transgender individual depicted on screen and she gave us what she thought she wanted to see um, and then, then from there, we started moving into the production phase. We didn't think that she would be actually in the movie at that point. Uh, we actually started doing casting and we, we ha were able to bring in and read many fantastic um, actors, but none of them just seemed right for the role. And I think one of the reasons was, is that she was so important in consulting and telling us her story that we had her in mind every time. Yeah. Every time we'd see another actor read the lines, even if they're a very talented actor and a member of the transgender community, we were still seeing... Celia. And so eventually, um, I think Andre finally just asked, goes, do you just want to play the role? And she says, I'm waiting for you to ask. Um, <laughs> so we were lucky enough that she felt that way. Uh, we flew her in uh, to do the film. She met Raphael like the day of they started acting. They became like friends and just started clicking and, and her real lived experience kind of got brought to life. Um, and we were just so thrilled and honored that she was a part of this project. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, it was, when we say like she flew, you know, we, we flew her in to, to play the role. It was like, she stayed in my apartment in my tiny little spot in Queens at the time that was like, also the, you know, the production house was everything like, you know, it was, <laughs> she was, the, the openness there and, and what she shared was, was tremendous. And that, that really inspired, I think, inspired us to keep pushing on aspects of film and keep trying to get things right and keep being open to other sources of input so that the authenticity and the and the sort of the intensity that we got through that process could continue being a part of the film in, in all the different storylines. 
Um, but another, I think, question, another question for you guys: How did the story came about? How what you know? What inspired you? What inspired you guys to you know to work on the story? How this this story, which obviously I'm going to talk to Rafael about this eventually, but they they they're they're two different they're being two different stories being told. In, in, with an individual, he's struggling with with individuality, with in, identity, and struggling with with a personal issue. Uh, you know, both of them are personal issues. But how did that story came about? It came out. It, it came out a bit in in stages. Um, and it, this was, you know, our, we began working on it six years ago, and, and some so some memories have started to <laughs> morph Rated into things. Yeah. But I mean, it was really. You know, I think we were we knew that we were going to make a film. We were in a position to attempt making a very, very much no budget, and I get that's like a real no budget, not like a pretend like film. And so we were we were talking about a few different stories, and the idea that we brought to to Celia was uh, was one that we had become you know that had come up and we became interested in. We brought that up to Celia, and, and that aspect of the story started flushing itself out. We knew the main character also should uh, needed to be an immigrant. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, personally where I, where I grew up and, and a lot of the people that were closest to me growing up were from other countries. Um, my, you know, some of the strongest, most important relationships in my life, my, my best friend is essentially my brother, my first real relationship, you know, she was from Latin America, he's from the Caribbean. People that, you know, whose stories I, I was witnessed very, um, you know, there with them in some cases. Um, was part of what then, you know, at least from my perspective, helped fuel that side of the story. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think so much of it was just being like kind of I'm blown away and by so many different, there are different people's struggles and how some of these struggles, while being very different in their physical manifestations, have a very similar internal kind of um, int uh, intensity to keep saying that word, but, you know. Yeah, and, and I think we knew early on you know, this was a, this was a journey of discovery for us, learning about these things and and, just, and exploring. Um, but we knew we wanted to make a people centric film, not a plot centric film. Not that Luca doesn't have a plot, of course it does, but it's not. You know, uh, someone has twenty four hours to uh, save the company or rob the bank. It's it's more about people and their world. And we knew we wanted it to be focused on that, and um, we wanted it to be dramatic and beautiful as best we could make it. And and that's was what guided us to some of these themes that were very dramatic and very real and hopefully very timely. Um, I, I don't like mentioning the whole, I, I, when, I love supporting in the, in the, in the, you know, in the filmmakers and I, then when we mention low budget films, to me that doesn't exist. Because to me the values on the story, it's not anything, it has nothing to do with the, with the money that it is. But I did enjoy, and I, I, I'm glad that, you know, it was mentioned on the media kit that, you know, you know we, are, we are being open about this being, you know, shot on a handheld, you know, style of, of system, and and I and I say this because when I when I'm out and about, when I when I we used to be out and about before the pandemic obviously happened, I tend to do all my interviews on my phone, on my iPhone, even an old iPhone, and people were surprised at you know the the quality of how, how my interviews came out and audio and everything. So in, I think the question that I'm going to go with this one is, uh, what was the stuff the toughest part? What was the most challenging part of you know? Being between being in New York and and, and the you know, be, 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 you know, shooting, uh, you know, in a handheld mode. Man, there was. I mean, I think, I think the biggest challenge is money in the way that it becomes right when when you're making a film and you're just starting off and you think that you've got everything figured out and then it turns out you have to do a permit or a type of insurance or a type of thing, right? And then also you're like, oh shit, how are we gonna do this? So there is that, that challenge was, was very real. And there's the logistics, right? Taking, you know, eight cast and crew members from the US and flying, you know, down, down to Santo Domingo to shoot and stuff like that. There are logistical challenges therein. Um, we were, I think, saved at every turn by working with incredible people whose talent like was just, way above our budget level right and and they happen to come into the project and give so much um you know what we were able to do in republic of dominicana was that um our producer there ivan mendez was he may as well have been the mayor of the entire island like he knew everybody you go anywhere in town and he's he changed we, we where we scouted the locations in, in in some of these bate villages like he didn't even know he i knew he didn't know people in the village but by the time we left he knew everybody um, and, you know, without that level of openness and honesty, and, you know, he, 
Yvonne is just, a, I, I, we, we can't give enough shout outs to Yvonne, um, mm -hmm. but the uh, things like that really ameliorated a lot of the things that would have been really big challenges because of, of money issues. We are able to, because of incredible people collaborating with us, able to kind of skate by some of those problems. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, and and our our cinematographer's shoulder and back also paid a, a heavy price <laughs> shooting off. Yeah, um, I'm gonna come back to you later, but I, because I wanna I wanna I always tend to close the interview with an open question for everyone. But I wanna jump with my tocayo Rafael, and I, I I'm laughing about you what you just said about uh, Ivan because I think. Us Latinos, we are like that. We everyone knows who that we are, anywhere. I mean, everybody, I think everyone knows who I am, where I where I'm from, and that's we, we all we all think role majors of of uh, whenever we 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 you know we grew up or wherever we're leaving, that's uh, you know wherever we leave, that's how we, that's how we are. So that's why I started, I started laughing when you said about Ivan Ivan being like that because it's yeah. difficult of us, difficult of us, you know, you know, taking over a place. Rafa, I, you know, I'm impressed. I was really impressed. I want to congratulate you on, on you. your performance. And I, I, I was, I mean, obviously, Rafa is struggling with two different um, situations, uh, his sister and his identity. So, you know, you know, I, a couple of questions. First, let's, you know, let's think what, what was your first impression when you read the script and you, you know, you, you saw that, okay, this is what I'm gonna have to do. What, what the first thing that came to mind? The first thing that came to mind is like, I have research to do. Like I, I was like, this is foreigner to me. Like, you know, as a gay man, you think that, you know, like the, the struggles of trans and, mm -hmm. and trans identities, but it was not until I really started digging in and, and, and reading about it and reading books. I like, for my preparation for the role, I read like over 12 books. And through all my readings, like the more and more specific I got to, to uh, this, you know, the struggles of trans people, the more specific I got to go with the struggle of my character. Um, so I feel like that was the first thing that that I put myself into as soon as I got cast, because I knew the responsibility that I had. Mm -hmm. I knew that this stories like these are barely told. And I I knew that this was a moment and an opportunity to tell one. So I wanted to, you know, pay just justice as much as I could. Um I want to talk back. You know, I talk about it with Celia and, and your, I, I mean, the director said, I think you and Celia, Celia, you know, got, you know, got a good chemistry when, when you started working with each other. What were you able to learn from her? What, 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 you know, I mean, like you just said, you know, being open. Well, like, it was like, I think I, I talked about this in an interview earlier today. It was like, I feel like when I met her, um, I met her literally on our first day shooting. <laughs> so it's like, I met her, like we had lunch and then we started shooting. <laughs> um, and it was, you know, it was crazy. Um, but when I met her, I, I truly understood uh, the responsibility and how big this was because I could see how big this was for her. And her representing not only her, but her community. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, oh shit, okay. Like, you know, we, we have to make this as truthful as we can. And we have to be as present for each other as we can. And she also was very vulnerable to me from our first interaction. She came to me and she was like, I'm, I'm not an actress. And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, but you're a very beautiful alive human. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be alive in this thing that we're gonna do now. Mm -hmm. And so she immediately trusts me and that instant trust uh, and that space to feel safe with each other. I feel like that translates to A, the message of the movie and B, the way that all of us should make us feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause yes, we're, we don't have to be trans to identify or enjoy this movie, but this is, this is more, this is more than a trans movie. This is a movie about finding yourself, mm -hmm. whoever yourself is, finding that authenticity, whatever that authenticity looks like. And I feel like that really came to play for me when I met her. 
maybe this question can be an open question for for you know for the three of you um how, I mean, how I know this, this, you know, what you just, what Rafa just said is obviously, obviously, you know, it's just not just a movie about a, about a trans uh, person, but the trans community, you know, it, it, there's still a lot of, you know, a lot, a lot of work to be done. Do we feel that the, in the last, like, maybe the last four or couple of years, has anything changed in a positive way that maybe Lupe will help, you know, in, you know, transform and, and you know the, move that chip that, that, that way maybe the director the first I yeah I, I mean I, I would say from my perspective that things have certainly changed especially in the willingness of the conversation people to have the have a conversation around you know <clears throat> the trans experience LGBTQ experiences in general I think even going from you know where the conversation was in any of those topics, six years ago when we started this film, which was, you know, I think in some ways better than it had been years ago. It's definitely different now than it was then, far from perfect in either iteration, right? I mean, I think as far as it's come now, it's still striking to consistently see how far it needs to be gone. Um, I hope, you know, I, I think that the greatest thing that Lupe could do as, as, a, as a piece of art, as a film, is help further that conversation in, in a positive and compassionate light. Um, you know. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's, I think the fact that we're, that's, that HBO is taking, it's, you know, an outlet as big and prestigious as HBO is willing to take on a film like Lupe for its content, specifically because of the issues that it deals with all across the board, I think, mm -hmm. um, I think does show things going in the right direction, right? Because I don't think, I don't think when we started this, unless we'd had huge, you know, massive name talent, right, flashing billboard, here's you know, in a hundred million dollar budget, you know, maybe we would have swung people to the, to, you know, being but I don't necessarily think that's true. So, I, you know, I, I think there are signs that things are going well, but I think there's plenty of other signs that show that it's like, oh my God, this is still an upward, you mm -hmm. know, battle. Well, visibility is power. Again, like there's nothing more powerful that you can do for someone that let them feel seen. And as a, as an art form, like movies, like make us feel seen and like, a movie that not only talks about the transgender experience, but also the immigrant experience, mm -hmm. and also like uh, the Latino experience, mm -hmm. and also the sex worker experience. Mm -hmm. All these are like uh, people that need visibility, and there's not enough. Like Latinos, us, we represent the biggest minority in this country, and we are represented in the media, not even 1%. Mm -hmm. And we are, what, 30% of this country? This is like, it's crazy, you know, like it's like it's there, it's not enough and hopefully this uh will bring you know more excitement and more you know more hunger for more projects like this and stories like this because we definitely need them and we definitely crave them mm -hmm. and and when and when you throw us a bone we we champion it and hopefully you know people and the reception for this movie is going to be it's going to be overwhelmingly positive because again there's not many of these stories being told so you know as much as support and love that we can get we all lift in each other at the end you know i think i think rafa i mean i think i think the boy, everyone jumped into one of my final questions but i think rafa nailed it on the head when when that's my perspective when i you know find it when i finished it was like this that the different subjects being the different you know the different social subjects that we're tackling here it's not just transgender is about social exploitation and everything. So I think Rafa explained it perfectly on how what the movie is about and what the message that you know they should that we wanted to you know you guys wanted to come through was about. But you know this two part question maybe um what was your guys you know first you know uh, reaction when you find out that HBO picked up the the movie that you were the HBO is a massive. A, you know, platform and and it's and and, and for a but for a long, not a long time, HBO has been really open about giving space for all type of, of uh, social subjects. What what's your guys' reaction? Even Rafael can handle this. What was your guys' reaction when you you know you heard the news? And then what you know what I think you already answered this, but when you what, what you what you think people you want people to take away from the film once they finish seeing it. Well, I got the news. Andrew called me. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but it was my birthday. 
I was on my way to Palm Springs to celebrate my birthday with my friends and he got me the news. So uh, best birthday present ever. <laughs> Thank you, Absolutely. HBO. Um, and also like for a movie like this, uh, like, you know, it has been a process. It's been six years in the making as is, is the, the highest way of flattery and validation, you know, of the hard work of when you believe in a story, you just champion it all the way because we just need someone with vision. And Andrew and Charles were those people in this project. They had the vision and we all followed. And this is like the biggest form I feel of paid of, you know, having a platform like HBO, like, you know, champion a project like, like, like ours. And I want anyone, anyone that sees the movie, um, I feel like the goal of like, for me as an actor, like I would like people to, to take from this movie is that we're all not that different. You know, mm -hmm. like at the end of the day, like you can be dealing with your trans identity or your straight identity or your queer identity. Everyone feels a need to, to be seen and to fit into some sort of like form. And there's nothing, nothing more powerful than authenticity, whatever that might look for you. And, and I hope that people get inspired to finding that and exploring that because Life is short and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. That yeah, I, no, I, to answer your first question, um, I think, well, first off, you know, we're, we're very thankful and a shout out to our amazing uh, sales agents at Shoreline, um, you know, for, for championing the film and for getting these deals and negotiating these deals because, you know, they're the ones that, that made it happen um, on the sales end. And we're super grateful. I think they, they emailed us at like midnight with a quick question saying, hey, HBO is interested. We need this file real quick. And we both like leapt out of our bed and like called producers and sort of panicking. And then the next morning I woke up and I just assumed it was a, had been a dream. So we were very excited and uh, yeah, and we couldn't be more grateful. And, and like Rafael said, uh, having a platform like HBO to get this, this beautiful small story that, that we're so grateful to be involved with out there is just an honor. I, I just, I, the, for everybody that puts so much into the film for their work and, you know, all of our work, but, you know, to say, you know, we took a lot from people for lack of a better way to say it. You know, I mean, people gave so much to the they film, so much. you know, hours and difficult days and cold weather and hot weather and all of it. Um, to have it end up on a prestigious platform like HBO. Um, I mean, when we signed with Shoreline, that was like, for us, from our perspective, it was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then we bring us HBO, like, oh my God. Um, you know, I, you know, it's, it's equal parts, I think, um, incredible, like gratitude, um, just, just, you know, unrivaled joy and just sheer terror at the same time. Cause it's just like, you know, if, if it's like scary to get up and like read a paper in front of class, like this is that tons of million, but we're <laughs> super excited. Sure, excited. I, I, again, I want to thank you guys for your time. I know we've been, we are all been really busy today. And again, I want to, I want to congratulate you uh, guys on the movie, Rafael. Gracias, you. On, on your performance, I was blown away by Gracias. what you did. And I think, I think, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I, you know, you nailed it on, you know, you nailed the nail ahead on this interview. You, this is the way you saw the movie. So I think the way people will see the movie, this is not just Gracias. a movie about transgender, uh, uh, people is just about finding yourself and that's basically what I saw so I want to congratulate you and all of you on your amazing job and, and wish you the best luck and again thanks again for your time thank you thank you, thank you for having us Ciao.